Hello, Ada 2 Garage viewers. In the last video, I showed you how to install this $50 Harbor Freight winch into my garage floor. And in this video, I'm going to go over what to do with the rest of what's in the box. And that means, well, some of the instructions, probably tossing out most of the hardware we didn't use, and probably not going to install this right now. But at least the wiring and electronics equipment. I'm going to show you how to use that to get this winch powered and pulling cars into your garage. Well, my garage at least. anyone came from the last video wondering how I solved the problem with this bolt interfering with the winch cable, well, all I did was cut this one down to size. I just marked it, removed the winch, cut it down, and put the winch back on, and it should be fine now. The wiring for this winch is actually really, really simple. You've got the control box right here, which has a red cable labeled two winch and a black cable labeled two winch. They have positive and negative markings. And then you have the rest of the wiring the positive cable has an integrated circuit breaker, which I assume is an automatic resetting unit. And then you have the two battery positive and the two battery negative. So that's really all there is to it. I'm going to be using some basic battery cables to connect it to this battery right here, which is basically brand new. I've just used it to start some cars occasionally. And uh, that's about it for the wiring job. So here it goes. Now, they didn't give me quite enough wire from the control box to actually be able to easily mount it to some wood, but that's okay. I'll probably just stash it right behind the winch. As far as attaching the wiring to the winch itself goes, it's very straightforward. The terminals are very clearly marked with red and black. You're just going to attach red to red and black to black. In this case, white, I suppose, but you can assume that it's the negative because the red is definitely the positive. Obviously, there's some kind of uh, duh notes here. Make sure that you don't install the cabling in the way of the winch. Make sure that the control box is in a safe place. This probably also receives the signal from the wireless remote, so you probably want it in a raised position for right now. I'm just going to leave it right here. And obviously, tighten these connections down nice and firmly. They appear to be basically a 10 millimeter. If they're not, they're dang close. No need to over tighten them. You don't want to break any terminals. Same with the battery. Moving on to the battery, I'm just going to use these little connectors that are supposed to hold the cable in place and make sure that I go negative. There's a little negative symbol right there. Actually, I want to connect the ground last. So I'm going to do positive here first. Last bits of advice here on tightening this down, I would definitely recommend that you make sure you clean the battery terminals and that you have a well-charged battery. I have a maintainer to keep this one on and that you use terminal connectors, which are nice and clean as well and as high quality as possible. It's really gonna make a big difference with resistance here, how well this winch actually runs. So that's my basic advice there. These are pretty cheap terminal ends, but they'll work. I'd also recommend using some washers underneath these bolts on the battery terminal endings. So I'm going to take these bolts back out real quick and add washers. And with that, our winch should theoretically be able to power up. Before you ever try to use the winch, make sure you have the clutch engaged. It's on the right side there. You basically just pull the knob out and turn it 90 degrees. There's a little pin that sits on it so that it doesn't go back in. When you want to engage the clutch, you turn it and let the pin sink back in. Pull the cable and you'll hear a clunk and that's when the clutch re-engages. Right now the clutch is engaged. You pull this out. You see that pin pops up, you turn it. Now the clutch is not engaged. That's when you can freely unspool it. To re-engage the clutch, pull out a little bit, turn so it sinks back in. Pull the cable. You'll hear that snap, and that's when it's back in. So now that this is ready to fire up, we're gonna use our nice nifty little wireless remote. And the instructions of this are pretty simple. It says to enable, press and hold for three seconds until the LED is on. Disabling is just the opposite. And obviously we have extend and retract. So if we go retract, there it goes. The winch works and extend. 
obviously no load on it, so it's gonna kind of unravel. And then turning off the remote. So there you have it, everyone watching 802 Garage. We've got ourselves a working garage floor winch. And now you probably all know what it's time for, a test. And the perfect candidate, of course, my 1993 Subaru Impreza. Only weighs 23.50 pounds. Ah, like a glove. Well, gotta go engage the clutch. Hope that this remote has enough range. And for right this second, all I'm gonna do is take up the slack and see how it looks. Oh, it's already yanking on the car. So not a lot of clearance from the cement, but it is clearing that bolt. You can tell there's some load on it. And now I do not plan on ever retracting this while I'm outside of the car, because just in case this cable ever snaps, these steel cables can hold a lot of energy and I'd much rather it destroy some stuff or a window than me. And that is my advice to all of you as well. Do not let anyone stand anywhere near this winch cable if you're using a steel cable and don't stand near it yourself if you're using one of these cheap winches or really any winch, especially to haul entire cars towards a garage. I can already see it moving the car a little bit, so I think this is gonna work, folks. So for right now, I'm gonna get in the car. And the point of being in the car, of course, is not only to protect yourself from the cable, but so that you can make sure that it's out of gear and that the e-brake is off and that you can press the brake if by chance the cable snaps. So I'm gonna let off the clutch right now and push the brake, okay? So put the car in neutral. And now if I take my foot off the brake and off the clutch, the car just tried to roll a little bit. And now if I retract. All right, round two, I have rolled down the window. I had to go get my keys. Ooh, the car moved. <laughs> Bounced a little bit too. But so one downside of this winch, the remote can't really go through surfaces. Uh, probably has pretty limited range, but... Well, it's moving the car. I'm gonna switch sides with the cable real quick just to uh, kind of reduce the angle it's going at into the winch. And just so you know, I did set the e-brake and uh, extend the winch a little bit so that there's no tension on that line. And back to work. Not bad, it did it. And I even uh, bumped into my TV stand and pushed that a little bit. But uh, yeah, no problem, I guess. Um, yes, it's a little bit slow. You could hear it struggle a little bit as I tried to go up over that lip, obviously. Um, who knows, if I had a more powerful battery, it may be 
uh, stronger too. I mean, I know it's just a 12 volt battery, but I'm saying this is a cheapy low amperage draw, but should be enough for this winch. Either way, I would call that a great success. And a lot of you may be wondering why the heck do I need a garage winch like this uh, when I could just push the car up into the garage. I know a fellow YouTuber of mine gave me some crap for that. Um, the basic point is one, uh, I don't have to exert my energy doing this. Two, I don't have to have multiple people around to push a car because there's no way I'm getting up, up that driveway because it's on a slight incline or over that lip. Uh, and three, I can do it all by myself. So for example, if I just pull the MR2 back into the driveway and turn it, uh, then I can just use this winch to pull it all the way up the driveway and it right into the garage. And that's exactly what I need. There are other potential uses for the winch. Uh, you know, if I do need to drag something heavy by chance, um, if I need to, you know, hold something in position or whatever, I could even theoretically install some pulleys in the ceiling and use it to lift stuff. Although I don't feel really comfortable with that, but those are all possibilities for right now. I'm just going to use it to drag cars into the garage. There is one more quick thing I want to note about this winch, which is that the duty cycle is only 5%. That's five. So what they recommend is 45 seconds max at max load and then 14 minutes and 45 seconds of rest, I believe is what it calls for. So that's a really long time to wait to use it again after you've maxed out the duty cycle. Uh, I have no idea if I'm anywhere near the max load. It's 2,500 pounds and getting exactly what that rating means online was pretty difficult. But basically, I only plan to pull 2,500 pounds uh, on a level surface on the incline. So I really shouldn't be maxing out the winch too bad. If anybody else knows more about winches and if I'm going to just absolutely destroy this thing, let me know. But the research I did before buying the winch basically told me that I should be fine because I believe the 2,500 pounds is rated on an angle uh, and with some other factors involved. So in this case, on a level surface, it really shouldn't have much of a problem. I'm just gonna treat it like I'm at max duty cycle all the time anyway, anytime I'm pulling a car. There's no way in heck I would pull like a big truck with this or anything. It's just gonna be Subarus, small Japanese car, stuff like that. Uh, anything bigger, we can, we can push at the same time. You know what I'm saying? I had a lot of fun installing this switch. I think it's gonna be really useful to me and I hope you enjoyed watching and that if you wanna do the same, you can follow along and complete the project yourself. Catch you soon on 802 Garage. See you soon, folks.